Good morning and happy Monday. It is a beauty here in Cassius, North Carolina. Uh, you'll get to see it here in just a minute. A nice, cool, crisp at 66. Perfect time to say some prayers. So I'll give you a moment to send yourselves and we'll begin. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. And from Psalm 103, The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy on those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. For he knows of what we are made, and he remembers that we are but dust. Our days are but as grass, we flourish as a flower of the field. For as soon as the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord is from old and endures forever on those who fear him and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments and do them. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord our God, as with all creation we offer you the life of this new day. Give us grace to love and to serve you, to the praise of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We can read from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13. The next Sabbath... Almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. But when the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy and blaspheming. They contradicted what was spoken by Paul. Then both Paul and Barnabas spoke out boldly, saying, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken first to you, since you reject it and judge yourselves to be unworthy of eternal life. We are now turning to the Gentiles. So for... So... For so the Lord has commanded us, saying, I have set you to be a light to the Gentiles, so that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and praised the word of the Lord. And as many had been destined for eternal life became believers. Thus the word of the Lord spread throughout the region. But the Jews incited the devout women of high standing and the leading men of the city and stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas, and drove them out of their region. So they shook the dust off their feet in protest against them, and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy, and with the Holy Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle comes from Roman 8, and... If you were in church yesterday, you heard this. The law of the spirit of life in Jesus Christ had us set us free from the law of sin and death. All who are led by the spirit of God are children of God, for we have received the spirit that enables us to cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness that we are children of God, and if God's children, then heirs of God. If heirs of God, then fellow heirs with Christ, since we suffer with him now, that we be glorified with him. The sufferings that we now endure are not worth comparing to the glory that shall be revealed. For the creation awaits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. The Spirit of the Father who raised Christ Jesus from the dead gives life to the people of God. And 
And one of the ways that the Lord gives life is through scripture and through parable. And our second reading is one of those parables, Mark chapter 4. We also heard this in church a couple of weeks ago, the parable of the sower. Matthew's version, that was. Again, Jesus began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat there while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables. And his teaching, he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell on the good soil, and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing, yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, Let anyone with ears to hear listen. When he was alone, those who had been with him, along with the twelve, asked him about the parables, and he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything comes in parables, in order that they may indeed look but not perceive, they may indeed listen and not understand. And so they may not turn again and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? Then how will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. These are the ones sown on rocky ground. They are the ones who hear the word. They immediately receive it with joy. But they have no root, and endure only for a little while. Then, when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are sown among the thorns. These are the ones that hear the word, but the cares of the world, and the lure of wealth, and the desire for other things come in and choke the word, and it yields nothing. These are the ones sown on the good soil. They hear the word and accept it, and bear fruit, some thirty, and others sixty, and others a hundredfold. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now pray in the words that Christ has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As usual, three prayers today. This one about the pilgrimage of life, particularly as we age. Gracious God, I need you more now that I am growing older. Help me to do less talking and more listening, less complaining and more exclaiming. Please, no bossing now, just watching over and standing by, but not telling how. Keep me from moodiness and self-pity. From repetitious words, set me free. Keep me in tune with the young, let me be carefree enough to have fun. Let me not think the world has changed so much that I grow bitter and out of touch. Let me use my experience in much living as an incentive for more giving. Gracious God, I need you much more now. And that prayer from Charlotte Carpenter. This prayer from the second century, the Liturgy of St. Mark. We render unto thee our thanksgiving, Lord our God, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by all means, at all times, in all places. For thou hast sheltered, assisted, and supported, and led us on to the times of our past life, and brought us to this hour. 
and we pray and beseech thee, O God and loving Lord, grant us to pass this day, this month, this year, and all the time of our life without sin, but with joy and health and salvation. Amen. In this prayer for the power of the Holy Spirit, as we read in Romans. O Holy Spirit, who so many centuries ago didst come in creative power, and brooding upon the face of the waters didst from chaos bring calm, brood over us. O Holy Spirit, who did speak through the prophets and the saints, inspiring men with the power to speak for God and to live for God, breathe upon us. O Holy Spirit, who in the hush of the upper room didst fall upon women and men like a rushing and mighty wind, purifying them as with flame, sending them out with power beyond themselves, knit us in a close and loving fellowship that we may to receive thee. All this we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and in the power of that same Spirit. Amen. And that prayer from Leslie Weatherhead in the 20th century. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Great to start our Mondays together in this way. I hope you have a very good one, a very blessed one, and I look forward to seeing you next time.